So let, let me introduce you to the cart knock before we have him call in. You guys are going to love this guy, I think. So he just walks around with like a police on, cam gentleman. on his chest, you know? Not seeing positive signs. Leaving the cart there actually makes it harder for him to open his own door. And he's still doing it. All right. Light him up. Go on, good one. There you go. Weep, weep, weep. Sir, sir, you left your car right here. What's interesting is he, he does it by himself. Area. He's just out there the fucking with people. Right there. They go back it's where so the car wild. Are. There's one over there. See where that guy just came from? Or over there where I just came from over there? I just came from one. I'll show you where it is. I'm with Cartnarx. It's great. It's great too. And like, you're even blocking your own door from opening. You think <laughs> you'd understand how that could block someone else's door from opening, right? No, no, we are a highly trained. See, that's not our. That's not our siren, by the way. That's an ambulance. Uh, we are a highly, <laughs> highly trained organization of, of narcs. Uh, hold on, wait, wait for this ambulance to go by. One moment, if you don't mind. Quality siren. Uh, more in the common usage of it, like narking someone out, snitching on them. Oh, okay. Like, not you're, narcotics, you're like. Snitch. Essentially, yes. Yeah. So what we do. <laughs> Self so we show people the snitch. error of their ways, and like that gentleman you know just. What? I got up at 3 4 this morning. Uh huh. I've been working all day nonstop. I think they pay for a guy to do this. Every ah, day. see? 90% of the time I put it back. 99%. But you're, you're very tired right now, and that's uh, causing an error in your judgment. No, Lazy bones. You know <laughs> no, no, sorry, let me explain. Here, I got these. So uh, this is when he, he turns it up. If they don't put right the cart back, truck. he puts a go. magnet on their car. And then they really uh, fucking lose it. it. So you can call that for a Just a magnet. About how not to be lazy. Oh, what's going on? What, what, what are you doing, sir? Why are you approaching me? <laughs> Why am I approaching you? Yes. This is yours. Take it back. No, it's got our, it's got our number Take for it you. Back. It's a present for you. Take it back. To teach you how to not be lazy bones. Take it back. No, sir. You keep Dude, it. Dude, his car is like open with the Why keys in it. Why are you running after me? People are so demented. You're a fucking asshole. I'm a nice guy, sir. No, you're a fucking asshole. Luckily, I have good blocking skills. I blocked your attack. You're an asshole. No, I'm a narc. Let me explain. I don't give a shit what you are. Yeah, you do, because you're running after me, trying to throw stuff at me, so clearly... I don't care. What I care about is you. I have rights. Just leave me alone. Yeah, I know. And what I'm saying... Leave me alone! I'm having a private, a small... Leave con me alone! I'm trying to have a polite conversation, sir. No, I don't want to polite. Leave! Sir... I'm calling the cops. I'm calling the cops. See, she's... I'm her. Uh, I'm a guy, actually. I'm a man. Call the cops on him. No, I'm, not, alone. No, I'm a nice Jesus guy. Christ. I'm having a polite conversation. Do you feel about bad for this guy at all? Fellow customers. Or like, oh, like, so... let's just do a temp check here. Like, do you feel bad for the, the car, the guy who's been narked on? Uh, I mean, he's obviously over the top. It's complicated. <laughs> Hell no, nah, bro. You don't feel bad for him? Fuck no. He, he didn't put this cork back, dude. Right. You can't do that. He had it coming. Since, since discovering this yeah. channel, I've always, I've started always putting my cart back. Yeah, you don't want to get caught slipping <laughs> no. by the cart. Narc. I, I remember when I was a kid and some guy came up to my mom and did this, and my mom fucking unleashed on him. Like <laughs> for this, she's yeah, she went straight hood on him. Somebody called your mom out. Yeah, she's like, motherfucker, you don't know what neighborhood I'm from. Who the fuck you talking oh, to? Oh shit! She's she like, I got three the neighborhood kids. Card? She goes, yeah, she, yeah, she. Grab the fuck. And I was like freaking out. I'm like, mom, please. Stop. Did he bail? Yeah, he bailed. He bailed. I'd like to see the cart narc versus your mom. And here we there are. There is Sebastian. How's it going, everybody? So you are the founder of cart narcs. Yes, I am the uh, the main the head agent in charge. Yes. And so and so if you're wearing a, a bulletproof vest of some sort. Yeah, it didn't start off this way. It was just uh, just me initially, and then I had a T-shirt, and I had like a little little uh, tech vest, and then after a guy pulled a gun on me in Texas, is that right? A, uh, an officer who's a fan in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, sent me one of his spare bulletproof vests. Just happened to fit uh, perfectly. And so, when someone pulled a gun on you, did you not think like maybe this isn't worth it anymore? <laughs> uh, no, because that's how the, you know. And I don't want to use the whole like terrorist angle but that's how they win is when you give up <laughs> it's when they use fear intimidation threats violence that's when they win they think and i had this conversation with somebody the other day after some guy pulled out like a like a nightclub sort of thing on me and he's like man just stop and i said well then they will know that that's the kind of the behavior so who, that who, gets results so who is they uh, the lazy bones right the, the lazy the war the against people. the lazy bones right the people who will leave their card out 
And then when reminded, politely may I say, by someone like myself, hey, that doesn't go there, they then don't say, oh, I'm sorry. They say, oh, F you, I'm going to yeah, hurt you. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did a, um, did a stray uh, shopping cart kill your mom or something? What, how, <laughs> what could create someone so passionate about uh, the, putting the carts in the corral? Actually, it was uh, in high school. I was bitten by a radioactive cart. Oh, that happened. explains yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, right. No, uh, it was. It was honestly it's super, it's super mundane. It was just myself and a conversation with a guy in the office one day about common courtesies. And he's very like OCD type of person as far as like picking up and being clean about your things. And he, we're just talking about littering and picking up after your dog and holding the door for people. Uh, not farting in an elevator is one of the funnier ones, I guess. But like stuff that isn't necessarily a law or doesn't really get enforced as a law, but you know you should be doing. And shopping carts were the one where we're like, oh, well, that all happens in one area. So we, I don't have to like wait for someone to litter, for instance, or to throw a cigarette butt on the ground. Let's go to a shopping cart or to a parking lot, I should say. So you're looking for – you started with the idea to look for people being inconsiderate, and you decided, well – the, the carts is the best place to find and actively confront these people. Right. And it, it started uh, about a little over three years ago where I just walked up to people and said, Oh, Hey, why'd you do that? I didn't have all the, the, the bulletproof vest and the magnets and the, you know, the siren, all that get up and stuff. And what kind of kept it going was people got so angry and so defensive off the bat. I'm like, wait, hold on. All I did was ask. But then they throw out all the excuses. They threaten me. Uh, like some of her older videos, people will say, well, gosh, there wasn't even any, uh, like she didn't put a magnet on anybody's car or anything. Like, no, because I didn't, number one, I didn't have them. And number two, it, it, all you take sometimes is say, oh, that's not where that belongs. And people, some people, I should say, lash out. Well, that, yeah, that's that, that. So were you filming it the first time you did it or was it all just love for the game? <laughs> well, no, this did come off of a, a sort of a bit idea. Or a, I work for a radio show here in L.A. Oh, okay, okay. And so I, I do a lot of stuff that, like, I visit, uh, I do a lot of on-the-street stuff or visiting actual locations. Uh, so, because everybody's had this observation. You go back on Twitter for 10 years, and people are pissed off about people leaving shopping carts. But I'm, I'm sort of a guy who puts his hands in the, in the pie, so to speak, gets his hands dirty. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's so how it all started. Are you, it's are you, snowball from there. Are you like a comedian or an entertainer? Do you see yourself as anything like that? Or I mean, yeah, that's, I, that is what I try to do is put a comedic yeah. spin on things. You know, with like the silly names I'm calling people and just the, like the very over the top ridiculous way I do things, kind of helps highlight I'm being so silly and they're being so angry. So like, I think if I went out and like yelled at people and cussed at them, I wouldn't. You know, the, 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 the hero villain dichotomy wouldn't really be there. <laughs> right, right, right. And how often are you going out there? You go out there by yourself. Do you ever feel like this is a little nuts? Like you're in there by yourself with all this cra crazy stuff confronting unsuspected people over a cart. Do you ever ask yourself, like, what am I doing here? Right. How do we get to this point in our lives? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This yeah. <laughs> is what my life has become. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that has come up, but, and I... Very rarely will have, quote, backup or assistance, um, just because I, I think it helps me keep, you know, more on my toes. You know, I don't have that out, that ripcord I can pull, so I kind of have to keep up with things and, and just kind of handle myself in that respect. So, yeah, there's no bodyguard. There's no camera crew or anything like that. Uh, every once in a while, I have a spotter on, like, a walkie, but, uh, you know, other than that, nobody else is out there. Wow. Well. So it turned into kind of a whole business for you, eh? I mean, you got the Carton Arc thing now. You got the channel. You have different chapters of Carton Arcs now, apparently, right, on the East Coast? Yeah, uh, there's a, it's a global York, community. Boston. I've been, I have been to the U.K., to Australia. It's Because uh, we get reports from those places. People will send us pictures and videos, you know, on Instagram or whatever. I say, God, you got to come to my location and, you know, fill in the blank wherever. And uh, we'll be there because we don't want Lazy Bones to feel like there's one area where they're going to be safe. Like there's no carton arts there. Yeah, we'll right, be in Hawaii right, right. and we'll be in you know Massachusetts at any time. You, you don't know. You never know. So where where do you think people are the angriest? Where have you found the angriest people in the world? I'd say overall, <laughs> the angriest slash most willing to fight are is uh, Las Vegas. Actually, I don't know what oh, it is about the heat. The eh? Yeah. 
and, and I, I noticed that too in other uh, desert cities like Tucson, like Phoenix, Albuquerque. I don't know what attracts like these like sort of like scaly lizard people to those areas. Mm, I don't sun. know if it's the meth. <laughs> I don't know the what meth? it is. <laughs> well, you just you see, I just see when I'm because I drive. I'm not just at the the airport and a hotel. I'm at every part of every one of these cities. And just driving around there, it's just like everybody looks miserable. And when I get out to talk to them, you know, they're they're angry. They're wanting to fight me. I I don't know. I guess it's the heat or whatever. But yeah, it's not fun. And is this your full time job? Are you a full time cart narc now? Uh, no, I could be, but I try to keep it as more just a, like a like a I don't know a, a hobby or a public service where I'm doing it mostly weekends, mostly afternoons. We don't do it after dark because we don't want anybody to think they're being robbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that true. It, but that is a spinoff. We want to get like a big uh, searchlight, park it up on one of those scissor lifts, and you know do cart narcs after dark. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's more like, it's like, uh, you go out on the weekend and pick up the literature, you know, at this, at the little league field near your house, that sort of thing. But, uh, but international. Ma'am, I wonder if you really are striking fear into the hearts of, uh, cart bandits. I think everybody in here, I'm thinking, we're all thinking I'm never, I'm putting that cart in every yeah, time. I always put and I'm sure we all have, right? I always put my None of us have oh. ever left a cart out. That'd You've, be outrageous. You, you taught me to do so. Uh, Sebastian, <laughs> you reformed I'm, Zach. I'm fearful of you coming up to me. And may I say, it's a it's a very low grade fear. It's not because I never hurt anybody. No, it's I've the never, humiliation. Yeah, it's just, and it, that's what I tell people. We are social creatures. We learn how to do by watching our mom and our dad and our parent, you know, our friends or whatever. Which is why, like, you don't see this sort of thing in Japan. You don't see it in like the uh, like Norway. I, I get reports from people all these places, photos and videos. Like this would never happen here because we just don't do that because it's not the kind of people we are. Mm, interesting. But and so that's why like when I was on I was on Dr. Phil last year and he's like, well, shaming doesn't work. Absolutely, shaming works. That, he told you that? Not, oh yeah. Well, his oh he was at segment after segment, guest after guest was trying to tell me that what I was doing was wrong. Oh and, and, no, Doctor <laughs> Phil! And yeah, he, you know I, what I, I? You know what? Doctor yeah. Phil probably done put his cart back. That's what it's telling me. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I told him at one point, like I expected better of you. You know, you know better than this. Because his whole deal is he's going to tell it like it is and give you the straight talk. And he's not going to let you get away with anything. You know, excuse wise. <laughs> but he was nothing but excuses. Um, yeah. Well, so Doctor Phil ahead. really is not the moral center of anything he's kind of a weird dude and apparently yeah yeah so so you were kind of at a war can we pull up that clip i want to see you on dr phil you kind of yeah, got, they got like a condensed version on their youtube page yeah i'd love to see that like? so you kind of got into it yeah fuck dr oh. phil well he, he had two big arguments one yeah of go ahead was, you you recap it yeah what well, his two big arguments one was well you don't know where people's go are going through in their lives as if First off, I do because I ask people because they'll say they'll give me an excuse like, oh, I'm in a hurry. And I'll say to do what? To commit, you know, to, to cure cancer, to, to get heart surgery waiting. No, they never are. It's always a lie. Um, so I did a, an experiment after that episode where I went out as uh, Agent McGraw and I just was like, I would go to people. I'd wave like a five dollar bill and they left their card out. And I'd say, I bet you had a real good because that would get their attention. And I'd say, I bet you had a real good excuse why you did it take your card back. And they were like, nah, I didn't feel like it. It was never. <laughs> and I'd say, well, I'll give you $5 if you take it back. And then they'll negotiate. How about $10 or whatever? So, <laughs> really? Yeah. It's never, never once has they ever read they had a great excuse. And then his other, his other fallacy that he tried to throw at me was, well, there are a lot more important things you could be working on. And I, and of course the audience, yeah. and I turned to the audience and I said, how many of you this morning went to a soup kitchen to feed the homeless? Because that was one of the options he brought up. And they were, oh, we don't know. No, you decided to go to Dr. Phil because not everything is heart surgery and curing cancer and, uh, you know, dismantling a nuclear bomb, you know? Well, everybody needs their, a hero and uh, the carts need their hero. And you're basically the Batman of returning shopping carts. You strike fear into the hearts of villains like Batman. And you don't need to be everywhere. They just need to fear you that you'll ah. dare, you know? Here's, right, here's, example. I mean, here's Dr. Phil with a shopping cart. And now I don't know if he necessarily returned that correctly, but based on how he reacted to you on his show, I'm willing to guess that this man does not return his cart. 
I would guess not. And, and some people, and I don't, I don't support this, but people have considered or said they would take a bunch of carts to his mansion in Bel Air and dump them on his part in his uh, driveway. Again, I can't recommend that. That's you know littering. Um, but it's you it's think he proposed. steals carts? Oh, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, <laughs> this man, this man's clearly unhinged and a wild person. Yeah. Well. Wow, I can't believe they brought you on and, and, and tried to confront you like that. That's just not right. I mean, here we celebrate you. Uh, we, we celebrate your achievements, and uh, we recognize your heroism. And I Thank you very much. And I, it's one of those things. It's, it's indefensible, ultimately. If there's no case against doing it, uh, there's a famous you know, meme written about, like, unless, you're, unless you just broke your ankle, you know, like all the things I'm talking about, or you just had your appendix first, there's really not a good reason. Is there anyone that you kind of got into it with that you felt bad about it afterwards like that one guy i don't were you watching the show before you came on oh no i didn't it wasn't part yeah of so the, you're there's that really famous one i'm a fat a-hole <laughs> like that guy was about to freaking lose it like do you ever and, feel bad for them or you're like ah fuck them well i do i feel bad like there was that that guy the i'm a fat a-hole guy and there was a guy who recently he was it was in palm springs and he was chasing me around his corvette <laughs> and he was jiggling all over the place. Yeah. Uh, to the point that, and he was like, "I'm gonna kick your ass, f you, mother effer, come here, the cracker." He called me the c word. Um, and <laughs> I said, "Well, you might even put a bra on before you beat me up, sir." And oh. I, <laughs> and I knew he got roasted so hard. And like the guy you're talking about, he was like on the verge of tears. There were other people like that. But then I think like I didn't do this to them. They have worked themselves up to this degree because there are plenty of videos where they just are like, ah, you're right. Sorry about that. They, you, you control your own feelings. Unless, unless I'm torturing you and your family, you control how you feel about this. Right. Uh, I guess which the, is a, a, yeah, it's a side experiment, I guess, in human it psych, is. psychology. It really is. You need, a, you need a case study. You need scientists trailing you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I do feel I feel bad, but like again, they're doing this to themselves quite literally. Um, what's the what, what percentage of people would you say are polite? Like are just like, oh, I'm sorry about that. Let me put it back. Uh, probably about twenty five percent. Wow. And I, I've gotten to the point now to try to like because people will say that I'm that I'm instigating or harassing to the point that so I I, I try to tag one of those people on the end of every video to show that. You could be like this person who pulls this gun on me and is chasing me around with a taser or whatever. Or you could be like this other person who just said, ah, my bad. No big deal. So that's, that's about an, 25%. Yeah, so so break it down for me. So 25% are polite, all good. Like, break down the percentages for me. Yeah, it's about 25% who are like, eh, whatever, that's cool. About 25% who just drive off, who either they either think I'm a maniac or... But I, I'm dressed like this, and I identify. Oh, you can see it in the videos. I, I, I well, to be fair, you do look like a maniac. Yes, yeah, this, this is possible. Even, even in person. the outfit. <laughs> and I, but I point to the cart, point to the cart, Richard. I make it very clear where and what's going on. That I'm not trying to rob them or solicit them or anything like that. Can I ask you? Um, so, do you always, if they try to drive off, do you always put on the magnet? If possible, yeah. And so, that, and so, and yeah, so they drive the off with the magnet on them. Right, because yeah. it's, it's twofold, and I'll, I'll show one for folks who haven't seen it. This is a version of it. It says Lazy Bones on board, like uh -oh. on board. and below that, what I'm covering up is our phone number. Um, two, two reasons. One, they can call us, and we can and hopefully say they're sorry, uh, which hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Has anyone called? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, a, there's an episode fairly recently with um, – it's sort of controversial with, uh, in L.A. with a guy named Harry Caravello who is known, uh, at least amongst the L.A. Cr comedian crowd, for a movie he did uh, called Windy City Heat on Comedy Central with Jimmy Kimmel and blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of people involved. Well, he's like a known a-hole in L.A. And I knew some people who knew, and he was talking about how he doesn't return cards, blah, 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 blah. And so I knew where he was going to be thanks to some inside information. He did wow. not know I was going to be there. Wow. And, I, and I threw one, and I stuck one of these on the end after he chased me around trying to beat me up. And he left like a two and a half minute voicemail of just Dude, mother at, that's you know, blah, blah, awesome. Blah. But now there's conspiracy behind they say, oh, Perry's an entertainer. I promise you, if you learn more about this guy, you have Wait, City can Heat. I listen to the, um, I want to, uh, what's the name of that? I want to listen to it. Oh, I believe it is called Fanny Packer because he wears a giant fanny pack, like industrial grade fanny pack. Yeah. So if you scrub to the end of that, or not the end of it, about two thirds through that uh, video, 
Uh, you'll, you'll see a pop-up little table. Pop -up oh, my table. goodness. Okay. And what's his name? I'm going to pull up his picture. This Perry Caravello, his, um, again, he's, he's been a – you think of him like uh, – if you ever watched or not watched or listened to the Howard Stern show, like members of his Whack Pack, that is very much what, a, what Perry is like. He's, Here he um, is. He's a – a wannabe entertainer, wannabe comedian, so that's why people kind of have there he is. Oh, is this the guy <laughs> they made like a parody video about? Or they made a, a parody movie with that? Yeah, Steve where, where he, they thought they he thought he was a celebrity basically. and they were fucking with right. him the whole time. Okay. And so he's still okay. been doing interesting. For, and they those same guys. I mean, that was the Jimmy Kimmel people back uh, in the late '90s because he would he would show up to comedy shows like uh, open mics back in the day, like the Comedy Store and stuff. And the guys were like, oh, my God, who is this psycho? And so they kind of adopted him as a character. And, and that's and so he but he's still doing stuff nowadays. Um, and that's why he's still in the, in the public zeitgeist to some degree. So he, did, psycho, you, did, you, did we find the I think oh, we, I, I think I just found. All right. It. I want to play this. I want to play this recording. That's so funny that you were able to track him down. That's kind of wild, dude. This is the sign saying well, the car return. Please return car. Yeah, if you scrub through about uh, two or three minutes, you just pop right up there. But yeah, he's uh, again, he's known. Uh, he does like a, it, he's it's a it's a, such a long story, but like he does a live stream now that is managed by other people. Like he doesn't produce any of his own content. He's just kind of a reactionary Yo, sort of guy. This got age restricted. Why did it get age restricted? Well, there's a lot of death threats involved. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, he is. Yeah, he's not a kind person by any means. Holy uh, smokes. Goodness gracious. Yeah, so that's the end. Let, let me get a little taste. I just got back from Costco. My name is Perry Caravello. Uh, Costco and on Sepulveda Boulevard there in Van Nuys. Your cart narc punk? He's lucky I didn't catch him and beat his fucking ass. Do not ever, ever, ever put a fucking magnet on my fucking car again. You cocksuckers! <laughs> That's awesome. He's like a Sam Finnis. <laughs> that Holy is it's so, it, so, it's so that... funny because there's a 30 year rabbit hole again back to Jimmy Kimmel in the 90s before he was even famous of, of this Perry guy. So we got 25 percent who are polite, 25 percent who just ignore. So keep, keep breaking it down for me. The other 50 percent is probably 50 50, where 25 the other 25 percent of those. Who will give me some lip, will tell me to F off, will try to make a couple of excuses, but ultimately they kind of give up. You know, they're like, they, they, they love maybe take one magnet and throw it on the ground. Uh, and then when I put the second magnet on, they're just like, I can't, you know, they're, they're done. Because I've probably diffused whatever excuse they have. Uh, you know, they might say, well, they pay people to take the carts. And I might say, well, yeah, from the cart return, not just in the middle of the spot where you left it. And then they kind of, that's the end of their argument there. And then the other 25% are the violent ones who will chase, threaten, try to run me over with their car, which has happened a couple of different times. <laughs> um, you know, and up to, no one's ever fired a bullet. So I, I've got that going for me so far. I've had one gun drawn. Two other guys threatened to pull a gun. Uh, one of those guys had shot a man previously. We found out later uh, what happened there. This was in Texas, uh, outside of Dallas, where a guy... He comes out of the car and he's like, uh, he's, who are you? And I'm, you know, I'm a cart and Well, he's, and he goes, well, I'm a killer. Uh, I'll put six in your forehead. And I was like, oh, that doesn't, that sounds like an extreme reaction to a, a magnet on your, your car. <laughs> well, he, so that video comes out. And then within a week, or well, like that guy was on the news last year because he was on a, a Dallas area train, which I didn't realize they have like a subway system. And apparently he shot a guy who he claimed was harassing women. Uh, I believe that guy survived because video of him being arrested as he asked the, the train. And he got out a year him. later? Uh, roughly, it was a year prior to when he approached me. So he, when he says, I'm a killer and I'll put six in your forehead, he has previous experience shooting people in public. But like, how do you shoot people and get out a year later? Only in Texas, I assume. Oh, no, no, he was never arrested. I, sh I should clarify that. Wait, he's a, he, he's a wanted criminal? No, no, he was. They didn't press charges because they said they didn't have camera a camera system on that train at the time. How the fuck you not get charges pressed for shooting uh, someone? <laughs> that's crazy. Well, yeah. So that that's uh, I yeah, gotta that's say, kinda... 
25% seems very large for people to react violently. That, does that scare you that so many people are ready to get violent? That's a staggeringly high amount. I, well, I think they are, I'm trying to, it's, it's, it, to me, it's the analogy of like, if, you, if a dog catches a, the car, what are they going to do? You know, they, they like to propose that they're going to act violent. You see this at sporting events and at bars. They like to buff up or buck up, I should say, and like and, and look like they're going to be tough. But I, I don't think they would actually get into a real fist fight, nor would I get into one, whether or not I could beat them up or not, because I'm not going to hurt somebody over a shopping cart. But I think a lot of that is posturing. I think the I'm going to F you up sort of stuff is, is more words than anything else. So ultimately, but it seems like your life has been threatened seriously. You've been tried. You've been had two uh, two guns pulled on you. You people have tried to st- run you over in a car. Uh, uh, knives have been pulled on you. I'm assuming pepper spray, anything like that. Pepper spray, taser. There's an only taser. one knife that's been pulled, but it was you. It was the craziest thing. This guy, who I later realized was most definitely a member of the Crip gang, uh, Crips oh, gang, I should say, in Long Beach. <laughs> He gets out of his car. He's in blue shirt, blue bandana, blue jeans, and I put the magnet on his, on the front of his on his Dude, hood. You are fearless, he's got a knife bro. Where he's like taking, he's like getting the knife to remove the uh, magnet. Which then I also realized, oh, he doesn't want his fingerprints on this magnet. Like <laughs> at the time, and I, I mean, as I'm narrating all these videos as, as I'm going along, and I was very clear, like I don't think he's threatening me with this knife. He's just using it to remove the magnet. Um, but then I was like. Now I look back like, oh, he's in all blue, head to toe. He's got a knife. He has someone that's, oh, okay, we're out we're in Long Beach. Oh, okay, I'm putting two and two together as far as who this guy was. But no, he did not threaten me with a knife, per, per se. But aren't you, you're clearly putting yourself in, in danger. I feel like that's for sure. Like, I mean, you're going to go across the wrong person, and they might shoot you. Is, is it worth it? That's a, a good question, and uh, I forget what the movie is. It might have been Gladiator, where they say, uh, "Yes, Gladiator." All men die, but not all men truly live. You know, <laughs> you, might, you might say, "Oh, that's stupid." What do you, you know, you want your mom going to your funeral because some guy, like you said, shot you over a shopping cart? And um, you know, I don't obviously, but again, I think I think there's so much bluster and puffery. Uh, and when you think about, when you really think about other risks in your life as far as how many people die on the roads every year and, and so on and so forth, um, you know, I, I think I think it's ultimately a relatively low risk for as dangerous as, as it does seem, which I agree. Well, you're in it for the game. You're ready to die for this. You know what I mean? Uh, I like, yeah, I'll take a bullet for a card, right? That's, that's what I'm hearing. Not the best. And my, obviously, your face is never bulletproof, obviously, so... Well, Sebastian, keep li- keep living the the fight and the good fight. Is there any uh, future projects we should look forward to? Is there any other in- uh, 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 rude kind of subgenres you're thinking of of branching out into? One that's really been uh, grinding my gears, just to say, I'm Family Guy, uh, is people who don't rack their weights at the gym recently. Um, okay. Because, and I see it. I have a nice new gym in my place I live in, and you go get the barbell off with the dumbbell off the uh, the rack and it just goes on the floor and it like no if you got it where it says 25 put it back okay um, okay i'll need to get a gym that allow me to put cameras inside uh, and you know do so on and so forth the gym sounds interesting because you know those guys are all oh, you're going to be a lot of hyper masculine meathead so it could be going down there for sure Right again, same same idea where people don't want to look stupid in front of uh, whatever. So I don't know what my outfit will be. If it'll be the, the, the best as well, there wouldn't be as helpful. But uh, that's if you are a gym owner and you don't mind uh, playing a little bit of a, having a little fun with some of your patrons, you can find my contact info out there. I would absolutely love to see that, and hopefully they're out there. Well, Sebastian, you are a man who has dedicated his life to a craft. He has risked life and limb to strike fear in the hearts of all villains who would not return their cart. And let it be known, everybody watching, that he could be lurking anywhere, in any place. Anytime. Yep. So you better return that, (laughs) not at night, yeah. So return that (laughs) cart, guys. Cart narcs basically everywhere, right? TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Fun fact not on TikTok. 
Oh, so uh, that wasn't I, you. That was uh, a lot of videos were on there, but I have been uh, booted off TikTok because oh. apparently they claim that my the activities I engage in could put myself in harm's way. They don't want to, well, to be, you know, like they don't want to be like the next cinnamon challenge, I guess, for the teenagers. Well, that is interesting, and uh, but, they're I, not I, necessarily I people, wrong about that, are yeah, they? Yeah, but there are videos of mine out there with I, I got hundreds of thousands of views, millions fan accounts. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, people will approach me in lots and say, hey, I, I saw you on TikTok. And I'm like, well, sort of. That's uh, how I found you. Which is fine. I don't mind it, you know, as long as the word's getting out there. The but word no, is out, so, but, but your main your main source of uploading is on YouTube, Cartnarks, yeah? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's the easiest one to search on, too, as far as by date, by view count, etc. So that's where I would recommend people to find it, everything we do. There you have it, guys. Sebastian. What does your family think about what you do? Are they worried about uh, you? <laughs> I, I had I didn't tell them, but my mom found out she was getting a like this a new cell phone, and we have a very odd last name. And for whatever reason, she was having to Google something or search something, and the, the cell phone repairman or salesman said, "Oh, that's the Cardinard guy." And she's like, "What's that?" And then, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but she's a fan. She she's a touch oh, around Doctor Phil with me. So your like, mom supports the cause. Me. Yeah, absolutely. Oh wow. What would you do if you found your mom not returning the cart, like, like, and while you were out in the wild? What would you do? Well, I mean, I would shame her, obviously. Yeah, she uh, has to be shamed. <laughs> that's easy. Yeah, there's no exception for family members by no, any means. No, no. Hopefully, she wouldn't try to run me over. Yeah, you never know. Maybe she was having a bad day. <laughs> Sebastian of Cartnarks, thanks for calling in. Thank really you, appreciate hearing your story. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. All right, keep going. Keep dodging those bullets and stay safe, all right? Thanks, guys. All right. There it is. Cartnarks. This man lives. Some men... Well, well, what did he say from Gladiators? All men die, but not all men live. There it is. This man lives on the edge. He is on the edge, man. This guy... I, I would be scared to go out there. I'll just be honest. This man has had two guns pulled on him, and he's, he's out there doing it. He's got mega cojones for doing it, man. I think he needs a superhero costume, like with a cape. Uh, <laughs> you know what? You mentioned Batman. Maybe he should just dress up as Batman. Then people would be less you know, offended by it. They'll know it's more of a bit. A whole Batman get up? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like if he rolls up wearing his outfit he's wearing now, I'd be like, okay, this is, this is funny. This is interesting. But you said that he intimidated you into uh, changing your ways. Oh right? yeah, but I, I don't. Oh wait, and you're you're Joker brain. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Batman. Yeah, he yeah. curbed me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because Batman, he he strikes fear in the mm -hmm. hearts. Mm -hmm. What are you guys saying? You want to poll about? And people are saying poll. I don't know what you what what. Well, the uh, the community's torn. That's he's a polarizing figure. It's, a, it's this has been a polarizing uh, uh, whole segment because there's a lot of love for Cartnart and there's you know a lot of people that think he's got cop energy. And oh well, he has narc in the title. I don't exactly. think he hides from it. I mean, he, he's by def he is by a self admitted narc, right? And you know, identifying. Yeah. Um. I mean, we can do a poll, right? Like what? what so, bad boy, bad boy. Is he what a? Is do? he a cab? Is he right? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, we can do a poll. So, do you support Cartnark? Yes do or no? Do you support Cartnark's mission, or just him in general? Him, <laughs> a cab Cartnark. To be honest, it's if I'm being totally honest, it's funny and entertaining. It's pretty crazy what he does. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I was I was relatively after, upfront about that with him. No, you were upfront about yeah. it, and I mean I agree with you. If if that if those stats are accurate, uh, that twenty five, one in four people is like getting violent with him. I mean, it's just a numbers game. If you're going and doing that all the time. Yeah, it, it he's gonna get hurt. Yeah, he's gonna get hurt Bad eventually. Boy, I mean, once really someone pulled do. once someone pulled a gun on me, I'd probably call it a day. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. Um, all right, I'm throwing up the poll. Stand by. Well, I, I honestly, if I have to vote on this seriously, I'm right in the middle, man. Well, after after speak. Oh, you hear love? Love is fully in support. I'm I voting yes because love, love. You you said because he mentioned Norway, 
Um, yeah. But you said in our chat that's the same in Sweden. Like in Sweden, nobody leaves their card out. Is that true? Oh, yeah, I mean, you'd be like cast out of society if you did something. Is that, like that bad? <laughs> it's. I mean, I've never ever seen it, and I cannot imagine ever doing it. Like, so let me ask like you this: Do they have the yeah. cart corral, or do you have to bring it back in the store? Yeah, they have uh, corrals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, but that's yeah, so it's interesting. Like insane to me that you wouldn't return your cart. They're like. Come on, bro. Well, do you have people that come and collect the carts? I mean, no, because there's no, no cards. No. Yeah, I don't know what's no. going on here in America. And but people way, get complacent because there's cart collectors. But which came first, the cart collector or the cart lever? Oh, interesting. Now we're do stuck in a cycle. Do you guys have to put in quarters? In, uh, in the oh, day? see, that's why they got you. No, you they're free here. See, that's a, yeah, that's an oversight. Yeah, oh. you got to put in a quarter. You put in quarter. To unlock it. And then you, you put it back and you get your quarter back. Yeah, and it's oh, not even a quarter. It's like $0.005. Or you have these plastic bits that you put on your keychain. Mm. See, I'm not it's sure. Cool. I, I like the free card. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm offended. Oh, people I, would absolutely fucking riot if they Yeah, I would now. fucking. I would. Like they should people would originally. Love, let me explain to you. If they tried to put coins in a cart, they would burn that mother. Fucker down. Do you understand? Uh, now that's like an Americans... affront to freedom. Uh, oh, pe uh, some people yeah, saying yeah. Uh, Aldi. Is it Aldi? Aldi. Aldi. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have those here in uh, LA, or very few of them. So. You at Aldi, you get the quarter back though. Like, yeah. you right. Put it in. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. some places in America do do. It. In Israel, they do that too. By the way, you have to put a coin in. Okay. I think they're, they're everywhere all but America does that. Huh. I'm just gonna lie. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but you, I don't know, I, I don't know if in your time here, love, but carts, they show up everywhere. They're in fucking <laughs> yeah. streets and corners and people's backyards and, and, and creeks, you know what I mean? There's carts everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Even Wally had yeah. a cart in his house. So, oh, yeah. They, they may do it uh, places other than America, but I do have to say, USA number one, the inventor of the shopping cart, an American. That's yeah. right. We are the best. That's an odd as invention. Always. It's just a little cart with wheels. How do you get Baseball. How do you get I don't know. credit for that? <laughs> but still in gold, baby. A Jew also invented it, you know? Round of applause for that. Are you sure you just making that cuz his last name's Goldman? I mean Oh, it says Oh yeah, he's, he's Jew. Jewish. He's a Jew. Yeah. Of course a Jew invented the shopping cart. <laughs> where you have to put a little coin in it. <laughs> anyway, I voted yes. I am in support of the cart narc. A, a clear third of the audience though, or just shy of a third of the audience is not supporting. So um, yeah, you know it's it is a little controversial. It is a little controversial. Hey, he's committed, man. It's kind of incredible. What an interesting character, eh? There you have it, the cart narc, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Meanwhile, people say, "Oh, wow.